Hello everybody. This is the last interview from the Climate March, so stick around for the end for some extra comments from me and enjoy the video. So, uh, I mean, normally I would ask you a couple of questions, but the first I want to know what uh, this is about. I love your uh, outfit. Well, I'm, uh, I'm, I represent Chemoer, which is a chemical company. Um, and um, the fun part is that all the food that's produced in the neighborhood where our, our com company is, that now has PFAS, which is a forever chemical. And with this forever chemical, I guarantee you, you'll stay forever young. Okay. You won't grow old, but you'll stay forever young. How good is that? Oh, that sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, take your pick. Can I... Um, you won't get oh, yeah, coffee Thank one? you for the apple. Okay. okay, now let me ask you. Are you vegan? Um, I partly eat fish. Partly eat yeah, fish. Yeah, about once a week I eat fish. Only fish, no dairy? No, no, no. no that's still oh. very good. Almost no dairy. No. Why is it that you don't eat meat but you eat fish? Um, well, of course, meat has a huge impact. Yeah. Fish also has a huge impact. But um, from somebody who's a food expert, uh, he convinced me that there's stuff in fish that you really kind of need. Well, nobody has ever convinced me that there's stuff in meat that I you really should eat. So. That's the thing. Okay, so it's, uh, it's strictly about the climate that you quit uh, eating meat, not about the animals. Um, I, uh, I was first triggered to stop eating meat uh, um, because of the, the huge ecological uh, footprint. That's true. I, um, uh, I did really like the taste of meat, um, but I have to tell you, uh, when I was still in the transition, I, uh, I had the craving for meat. And um, uh, even once in a while, for instance, if somebody would leave part of their meat, oh, it's too much for me, I thought, oh, oh I can have it. I, uh, I call that uh, roadkill, like uh, <laughs> it would have been wasted otherwise. Yeah. And in the beginning, it still tastes good to me. Uh, after a while, the last time was uh, when I was uh, having dinner with my uh, ex wife and the, the, the family, and there was this huge burger, which I know reg normally I would ah, love it. It didn't taste me anymore. So your taste adapts. Yeah, they adapt. That's yeah. what the, you, you, you're used to eating meat. If you're not used to eating meat anymore, you don't like it anymore. Yeah, yeah I yeah. completely agree. And uh, seeing as this graph shows you that, well, meat, vegetarian and vegan, and I would say uh, there's also a pescatarian. I haven't yeah. added that to the graph, but it's somewhere above vegetarian. Um, given that you see this kind of graph and the impact that it has on the environment, would this uh, in incentivize you to go vegan? Well, um, what you haven't, uh, haven't have, well, what you don't have in this graph is that how much meat you eat. Uh, so I, yeah, I, yeah. I would uh, say that, for instance, to the the, the outer left, yeah. that's somebody who eats regularly eats meat. Oh, that's and actually uh, less. Mm. The the outer left meat is left less less than a hundred grams per day. Okay. Uh, but that it's, is it's, every not, day. it's the medium eaters. Okay. It's the, there, there were high yeah. eat, high group uh, meat eaters, medium meat. Medium meat eat. Oh, that you get it. Medium okay. high, medium and low. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a, that's a I, mouthful. I, as I said just yeah. now, I'm I'm talking about once a week fish. Okay. I think that will hardly show on this graph. Uh, I mean, yeah, maybe it was about the carbon footprint. Maybe not that much. But uh, what do you think about the animals that? Uh... Um, it it seems to me well. Of course, if if animals are bred just to be eaten. That's, uh, that life sucks. Including the fish, right? Yeah, yeah. That life sucks. So um, I would prefer to uh, hunt for the fish myself. To snorkel and, uh, well, no, okay, okay. What do you think it matters to a fish or to any animal that you kill? Do you think they matter? it matters to them why or where they were killed? If they were killed yes, in a farm or I do, if they were killed because, um, a person? Uh, you, uh, what's the life you have before you get killed? If you're uh, simply bred to be eaten, that's a lousy life. If you have your life and um, uh, in the course of that life at some point you die, that's something else, in my opinion. Okay, so you... Okay, okay, I'm not gonna get out, go down <laughs> this track, okay. So, uh, I, I, I just wanted to your input regarding this uh, carbon footprint, but you say you're a pesc... 
I, I would say maybe an occasional on a pescatarian. Um, if you want to find more information, you can Google this. Uh, okay. This is the PubMed ID with the study. It's got 55,000 people were uh, were used in the study, and uh, you can actually find out what your carbon footprint is uh, by you get all the details they buy okay. by how much meat they eat how much fish they eat and maybe you'll find yourself uh, on the graph uh, know, knowing better where your carbon footprint is cool. based on the Thank diet you. that you choose where, where are you from uh, i originally am from romania but i live here okay. Uh, okay. so uh, yeah yeah Hey, thank you oh, so thank much you. Uh, for, for having a nice discussion. Uh, Very good. Yeah, keep yeah. in mind that even the one fish uh, doesn't want to dive for sure. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe. But I, w I wouldn't mind um, uh, if it was um, artificially bred, for instance, so that there's no living fish. Yeah. Would be okay. fine uh, okay. with me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, actually, I, I did a test with my students. I, uh, I teach at uh, Delft University of Technology. And I was surprised that some of my students said, well, it doesn't matter, even if I can't taste the difference, I still want it to be of a real animal. I didn't yeah. get that. <laughs> okay, I also don't get that. But yeah. uh, thank you for being open-minded and, uh, you know, I always like to uh, end on uh, where I tell people, every time, three times per day, you make a choice. You know, one choice uh, contributes to the animals being dead. That is maybe fish in your case and one choice doesn't so yeah you you get to choose and uh, you get to see the impact of that on the planet on the animals and on everything so thank you so much for being open-minded for having this interview and uh, have a good one oh good luck yeah thank you so I know a lot of these discussions haven't been perfect street outreaches. I know in maybe some cases I should have pushed a, a little bit more, but I thought I would provide a little bit of context on why on these specific three discussions, I ended up not pushing so much. First off, these, the intention of these uh, interviews was to more, more to show the hypocrisy of trying to be an environmentalist and not be on a vegan or a plant-based diet or a vegan altogether. Of course, all of the discussions eventually went to also towards the animals, but that was the initial reaction and that's kind of what I wanted people to get out of them. So I didn't really try to get them to be vegan, but rather I tried to see the, I, I tried to get them to see the hypocrisy in that. Second, I've been doing street outreach for about four months now. Um, I'm still very much a newbie. I've taken a couple of courses. I think it's a total of three um, into how to best do street outreach. Uh, but I found that some of them work well with my personality and some of them don't work great. I feel like whenever I'm very pushy or as pushy as the courses want me to be, or I don't know, maybe sometimes I should be, um, I feel like some people perceive me as extremely pushy. I don't know, maybe it's my personality, maybe it's the way I talk. Um, and that just gets people to become a bit more defensive. So I'm, try I'm still trying things out on how much I can push, how much I cannot push. Um, I'm still trying to find my voice and how I would how I would be the best uh, activist for the animals when doing street outreach because at the end of the day my goal is to get as many people as possible as close to veganism as they possibly can get there and one final point is that I have a bit of camera shyness that I'm trying to overcome some of my best outreach is done off camera but <laughs> I hope to catch those on camera in the future yeah so I don't know if it was a long or short message eventually. I don't want to capture too much of your time. I merely just wanted to explain why sometimes it feels like I'm not pushing enough. Uh, mostly because I want you to be by my side. I want you to subscribe to my channel. I want you to understand where I'm coming from. Uh, I want you to see my growth as an activist because I am still, as I said, trying to find my voice for the animals. And uh, make no mistake that uh, in my belief system and what I think, and what I want to do is uh, everything for the animals. And um, yeah, I won't take any more of your time. Have a good Monday, I guess. It's Monday here, so and, and it's Monday when it will be published. So I hope you have a good Monday. If you see it on the other day, I hope you have a great day. And uh, live as vegan as you can. And yeah, subscribe.